Hello guys, today I'm going to be showing and explaining how to get fully maxed out traits in Productive Bees in the All the Mods 9 pack. First off, you're going to need a couple machines to do this. First thing is a bottler. This requires 7 iron ingots, glass, and a smooth stone slab. This requires you to put bottles into this slot and you can put honey or any other fluid that is accepted into this slot and it will bottle it for you. So it's quite nice. Next thing you're going to need, any kind of centrifuge. I prefer the heated centrifuge. The heated centrifuge needs a powered centrifuge, two blocks of copper, two upgrades block, three iron ingots, and an active dragon egg. Then an active dragon egg is gotten from draconic chunks and an egg of any kind. And those are made with draconic dust. And how do you get the draconic dust? You get it from centrifuges that, or from bees that produce draconic comb and you put it in to a centrifuge and you get your draconic dust. Next is the block upgrade. To craft this, you're gonna need honeycomb blocks, wax blocks, an upgrade base, and an item frame. So not so bad. Next you're going to need a catcher. This also requires seven iron ingots. You need a dispenser and a piece of dirt. Next, a baby incubator. This requires seven iron ingots, a hay bale, and a daylight sensor. The next machine we're going to need is a breeding chamber. This is what's going to be breeding your bees for you. You're going to need seven iron ingots, an upgrade baby. So this requires four honeycomb blocks and four flowers of any kind and another upgrade base. And specifically a rose bush. And the last thing you're going to need from the Productive Bees mod is a gene indexer. This requires seven iron ingots, a crafting table, and a redstone comparator. So you're going to need all of these machines, some require power, some do not, the baby incubator, the breeding chamber, and the heated centrifuge all require power, so make sure you get power to those. To start out with our bee traits, the first bee we are going to make is a obsidian bee. I prefer to use obsidian bees when it comes to starting out because unlike other bees, they have the most health in the game because of the strong trait. As you can see, the Magmatic Bee has 15 health, and this uh, Sweet Bee has 10 health, because they only have Normal Endurance, and this one has a Medium Endurance. Obsidian Bees have High Endurance, which gives them 20 health, which allows them to survive longer for what we're going to do. It might take a minute to breed, so... you need to put a bee cage into here so they have they can breed now as you can see this is a obsidian bee with high productivity no weather tolerance durinal which means it only works in the day strong endurance and has a normal temper so if you hit it it will fight back so how do we make this work when it's raining and when it's night well, for when it's raining, it's pretty easy for that. You're just going to have to wait for it to rain, or to thunder. If the bee doesn't run off. There we go. He got caught by the catcher. Trying to run away. So, you're going to need it to rain. So, the reason we want a bee with high health is when they're in conditions they won't normally work in, they will get hurt. That's why we, you have to have them leaded and outside, hooked up to a fence, because if there's any beehives nearby, they will try to run into them. So, this guy, you're going to need some um, regen potions. These are really good to keep your bees alive, especially if you're doing multiple. 
So this guy will have regen. So once um, a couple of rain cycles have happened, after a set amount of time, he will get this um, weather tolerance will turn to any. So he will be able to work in any kind of weather. So rain, snow, lightning, no lightning, you know. He'll be able to work during any of that, which is really nice. And for you to change the behavior. So during all, some are nocturnal, uh, nocturnal to start out with. So all you have to do is keep them out during the day. And if you want them for the durinal to stay out during night. Pretty easy, right? But we get to productivity. This one's a little bit harder for us to do because the highest you can get on a base B is high. Which is, it's still good. But we're going to need something a little bit better if we want to make this very efficient. What you're going to need for that is a bee nest helmet. This has a chance of spawning kamikaze bees. The kamikaze bees are going to need to be caught with a catcher with some range upgrades in it. These are not very hard to make. It's iron blocks, more cones, and an up, upgrade base. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get a pillager. These guys make it a little bit easier. Just any mob hitting you will do. So what I'm going to do, get into survival, and we're going to watch the floor to see if we have any kamikaze bees. Okay. I'm going to get into creative before I die. And the ca catcher caught this kamikaze bee. So as you can see, it says productivity very high. That's what we want. Every kamikaze, kamikaze bee is going to have very high productivity, but they're going to be hostile, so you need to worry about that. Now, just for the video, I'm going to get some more kamikaze bees so we can do this next part. You're going to need something that looks like this, any box deal. You're going to need a bottler on the bottom, a piston up top with a one space gap in between with any kind of like trap door so you can put the bees in and close it. The bottler is going to need some glass bottles and all you need to do is place the bee, close the trap door, squish them. This is how you extract the traits from the bees. Now what do you do with that? Well you're going to need a heated centrifuge and some electricity for it. Place on your heated centrifuge, give it power, and put the squash bee material in. Now as you can see we got six gene samples because there's six including the type of bee, there's six different gene samples you can get. So there's one for the productivity, one for weather tolerance, one for behavior, one for endurance, one for temper, and one for what kind of bee it is. So we have the very high productivity, no weather tolerance, durinal behavior, the kamikaze gene sample, a hostile temper, and a weak endurance. So next, what do I do with all this? Well, you're going to have to get each of these, or the very high productivity, to 100% for you to be able to transfer it to other bees. So th this right here is called a gene indexer. This is just like mass storage for all the genes you're going to get. And something very cool about it is if I get another squash bee material and put it in here, it will combine them for us. Typically we would have to do that in a crafting table, but we need a lever. This requires redstone power to operate, but as soon as I turn it on, you can see that it's combined them. And now we have a 48% very high productivity. So we're gonna need to get that to 100. So like I said, you're gonna need a couple of um, kamikaze bees for this. And it's at 71. So this can take anywhere from like 10 to 5 bees. It's really dependent on luck. Sometimes you'll get like a 2 per, not 2%, like a 10%. And sometimes you'll get a like 50%. See, we got 21% here. So that should be enough. Nope, we're going to need one more bee. 
Okay. So next, what we're gonna need after we get a 100% sample, this goes for all the other ones. Once your is 100, you're gonna need to get a honey tree and combine it with a gene sample to get a honey tree with that trait on it. And what you're gonna want to do is let me get the B. As you can see, he has very high, um, just high productivity. And as you can see, he has rain weather tolerance now from when we were making it rain. So now he can work out in the rain. So it's just very simple to get that. We just sat, and sat it there and left it and it got it. So that's good. Next, what I'm gonna do is, so this guy doesn't run away us in the hole and feed him the honey tree just right click the bee with the treat and they should get that trait so now this was the bee before this is the bee now we transferred that trait over to the bee the obsidian bee you only need to do this twice so you need to have two bees with very high rain slash any um, nocturnal you don't really need to care about the endurance it's only so your bees don't die if you forget about it when you leave them out and for the temper if you are worried you're gonna hit your bees you can get some honey treats and feed your bees and it will turn them into passive bees after 10 or 15 honey treats so what do I do after I have these maxed out bees there's three things you could do to farm these gene samples to make it easier so we don't have to go through that entire process of getting those kamikaze bees, squishing them, get them, getting their genes, putting it on here. What you can do is over here I have, well I had a beehive. So I'm going to remove box. So First thing you can do, get any sort of advanced beehive with a box and get some baby upgrades. For each one of these in the hive, it will give you a 5% chance for a baby bee to be spawned every time honey is delivered. So as of right now, every time they make honey, 15% chance of getting a new baby bee. So that's really good. So let's put, just for example, these two bees in here. They will give honey, they will start reproducing, they will produce three new bees in here. Then once that's full, it'll just start sputing them out of the hive. So for this to be fully automated, what we're gonna need is this catcher, just like the same one we used down here, and place it anywhere near the beehive. You can also get um, range upgrades if it's gonna be a little bit farther away. So now, every time the obsidian bees produce a kid, it will pop out like right here. Then after a little while, well, that was a bad example, it flew away. Typically it's, oh, I, didn't, I don't have range upgrades in here, that's why. I'm just gonna steal those from here. And after, they start producing their own children. The bee catcher will catch them for you. This is essential for automating this. Nothing else will catch these bees for you, unless you're, you're doing it yourself, which I don't think anyone wants to do. Next, they are still considered ch children. You cannot squish baby bees in the squisher. They have to be adults. So what do we do for that? We get a baby incubator. And you can put the baby incubator wherever you want. Let's get these speed upgrades in it so it goes faster. As you can see, I put an obsidian bee in, get some treats. You re it requires treats, it takes around 10 to work. And as you can see, it's gonna turn that child bee into an adult bee. And for automating this step, you can use any pipes mod um, 
um, any I really anything that moves items for you for this time I'm gonna use module routers because I think it's the easiest what I'm gonna do you want to take from here so it's gonna take these B cages out from here then send into here pretty easy so it took it out from here put it in here and now it's in here now what do we do for these adult bees now we're actually going to use another module router right here it has to be facing opposite to the whatever block is on the other side and to make this work we're going to need a sequencer and an um, modular an activator mod so the way you want to set this up is front right click sneak look level then you need to get the B put the filter in here put that in there get a polar module pull the output from here put it in here but now we need the piston to work any redstone clock will work for this I prefer a sequencer I find it a little bit easier and what you're gonna need to do is get the sequencer oriented in the correct way here if I can get that done it needs to there we go and the way I set up my sequencer is to be just like this I'll pause for a moment 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 for you guys to be able to see that clearly I go down to the sequence length set to 100 then you want it to loop that will send the piston off automatically for us now this guy should be working he will take the bees place them in here they get squished Oh, I messed up here. It needs to be whitelist. I forgot to click that. So now that's whitelist. As you can see, took the bee, squished it out, gave you the squashed bee material. Pretty useful. So as of right now, we've had it automated with this beehive. Pretty quick. But now that we have this dirty bee cage in, we're going to need to send it right back to this catcher. You have to use dirty bee cages here because they, they're reusable. We cannot use the regular ones because they're one time use and it needs to be a closed system. So now, next time these guys produce a baby, catcher's gonna catch it. This is gonna move it into here to become an adult. This is gonna take it out of here into its own inventory, activate it in here and squish it. But for this to be automated, you're gonna need some kind of item collection system for it for when the bees get squished. I like using these advanced item collectors for in this mod pack. Pretty easy. So let's test this out. Let's say an adult bee came in here. It gets squished. This collects it for us. Next, we are gonna want to get this squash bee material into this centrifuge. So it's just a case of another polar and sender module. Pull from here, put in here. Bam. You may need to set up a filter to only take squashed bee material in this case. So whitelist, squashed bee material. That puts it in here, gives us our genes. Now we need to get any pipe I'm going to use module routers again. Villager. Pull from here, send to here. That will take all the gene samples out, put them in there for you. And that's just for this hive. 
producing infinite um, traits for us. So that's really nice. The other way, or the other two ways you can do it, is just by breathing them in a breathing chamber. This requires electricity and flowers as long with your two bees. So depending on what you want to do, if you're able to supply the breeding chamber with infinite flowers, this might be a better solution for you. It produces bees a little bit quicker, and you do not have to worry about this catcher catching the bees. All you would need to do for this setup is get a polar and sender, another baby incubator, send to here, pull from here, and just the exact same thing here as before. So we get a polar, do it to that. But for this sender, you wanna send it back into the breeding chamber because this uses the bee cages as well. So depending on which one you wanna use, you're gonna need a little bit more space for this uh, beehive. This is a little bit easier to do that's really about it, honestly. Oh, you could also, if you want, if you want it to be completely um, automated, well, not completely automated, all of this is completely automated, but what you could do is get Pokey Pokey gene samplers. This is very, very slow. I would not recommend this. This basically um, eliminates all these ske uh, steps of having to squish the bees. You would just need to put those in the hive and sometimes it will produce like 1% gene samples. So it's very slow if you are gonna do that it that way. You're gonna have to waste a lot of time doing that. But now let's say we have gotten all of the maxed out genes we want. So let's let's make a treat. And to pass them on, just like before honey treat with gene samples and see it has to be 100% if it isn't it won't work so we got the hostile bee sample or honey treat and for this these are just used to produce new bees so if you have kamikaze bees you are able to make a kamikaze treat you put it into a baby incubator you put the treat right here and an egg and it will give you like a kamikaze bee spawn egg so it's a very useful way of duplicating bees but anyways i think that's about it for the tutorial today thank you for watching